It's time for the Northwoods Cooking Show. Starring Uncle Roy and Miss Callie, the troublemaking dog. Hello and welcome to the Northwoods Cooking Show. I'm your host, Uncle Roy, and today we're going to be doing some Oriental Asian cooking. This is going to be fun and very tasty. First of all, we're going to start out making some shrimp fried rice. Now you can take and substitute any type of meat you want for this. If you wanted to do chicken or beef or pork or a combination thereof. But today I'm going to do shrimp. Now what I have here, I got five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got seven of these large jumbo shrimp. Now these are pre-cooked, so I'm not going to stir fry these. If they were raw, then you have to take and devein them, pull out the, you know, the vein and take off the tails and fry them with the vegetables. But these are pre-cooked. So what that means is I'm gonna add these at the last minute. Because if you put them in too soon, they're gonna get overcooked and get rubbery. And seafood, especially shrimp, gets rough, tough, rubbery like a rubber band. I mean, just, you know, crunch, little stretchy, stretchy, rubbery, rubbery. You want to make sure that you just put, if there's pre-cooked, you put them in the last minute. You just want to heat them up. You don't want to cook them, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> but anyway, these came with the tail on, so I'm just going to, you know, just simply pull the tail off, either thaw it out, and I'm just going to rough chop these up a little bit. Because I don't want to have, you know, big, giant, <laughs> huge shrimp. Of course, if that's what you want, go ahead. You know, everything is personal preference, you know, my show. <laughs> but I want this mixed in with the shrimp so that we have a nice combination of flavors from everything. So I'm just gonna take and just rough chop these into about quarter inch to half inch pieces. I don't need to mince them because I do want some, you know, texture and flavor as you bite into your rice. Nothing worse than biting into something like this uh, when you're making a rice or a cast or whatever, and you get these little minuscule pieces, it's like that you can't even taste that. It's not even a flavor. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it's just too little. So I like to have a little sustenance when I cook things. Let's wipe that off. So then we'll continue on now with our stir fry. And this is so simple to make. If you have your ingredients prepped up ahead of time, which I do, you put this together just a couple of minutes. You know, it's just very quickly, easy. So what we're gonna do is, now I have my frying pan here. I'm just gonna be using a Dutch oven. You don't, if you have a watt, great. You know, mine's in storage. Remember, everything I have is in storage. I just don't have the room to keep things here. I just hate that, I absolutely hate that. But anyway, I'm gonna heat this up now. And you wanna put in about, ooh, about two tablespoons of oil. I just got vegetable oil. And what I'm gonna do first is I got a three quarter cup of onion here. You can use, you know what, yellow onion, whatever. I have white onion only because it has a little bit more pungent flavor to it. And I like to have flavor in my cooking. So I only have three quarter cup of diced. This is like medium, same as a shrimp, a quarter to half inch diced uh, white onion. Now, three quarter cups of that. Now we're going to take and fry that up and cook it until it's softened. And that's going to take approximately about eight to ten minutes. So when this is nice and soft, we'll come right back. Okay, so now my onion is nice and soft. And I'm just going to transfer this into a bowl here. So we're going to take this out and continue frying with other vegetables. So we want to put this on the side here, and we'll just add this later. So I'm going to get all that out. And then we'll just take and add about another tablespoon or so of oil, just a titch. And now to this, we're going to be stir-frying our vegetables. 
I don't have the cordless. <laughs> The wireless microphone, I got this big wire connected. <laughs> so I got watch my stuff. <laughs> so to this now, we're going to be taking and stir frying an egg. This is mixed in with about three drops of sesame oil and three drops of soy sauce. And I'm just gonna stir fry this. And basically what you're doing is just making scrambled eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, that's all it is. And that's gonna heat up really quick and fast because your pot's already hot. So now we'll just take and put that back out into that bowl. Keep that aside. And just add a little bit more. Oh, I got some oil here from the onion. I just don't like putting too much oil in because I don't want it greasy. So if I have any in oil in that one, that's gonna be just plenty. You want like about a tablespoon of soap. Now to this, we want to put in a, a half cup of small diced carrots and a half cup of frozen peas. I got them both in here. And we're going to stir fry this for approximately, you know, two to three minutes. Just so that the peas get thawed out and so that the carrots will crisp up. So not, you know, rock hard. You want to take and, you know, and just bleed out the moisture and semi-soften them up, but we still want to keep them crunchy, though. There's nothing worse than a stir-fry. I know, I work at one place, and this guy, he did our stir-fry. Of course, he was a head cook, so you can't argue with him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and he overcooked his vegetables. I mean, it was like moosh, moosh, moosh. Oh, no, when you have stir-fry, you have to have crisp vegetables in your stir-fry. That's an essential in any type of stir fry. So we're only gonna do this for like two or three minutes, just enough to thaw out the peas so they're not frozen. And that same amount of time is going to soften the carrots so it isn't so hard hard, but at the same time, we're not gonna overcook it to make it mushy. And basically you can tell the two or three minutes are up by the color of the peas when they're like a bright green. So when you put them in, they're kind of pale, but as you can see, they're, they're turning green. And that is approximately done. That was quick. Because everything's heated, it's already, you know, it's already gone. So now, to this, we're gonna be taking and adding four cups of rice. This is pre-cooked rice. If you have any leftover rice from a dinner or something, this is the excellent way to get rid of it and use it. But you wanna make sure that rice is already pre-cooked because we're gonna stir fry it. I also have four scallions that I have small and uh, diced up thin. I'm gonna put that in. Along with two cups of bean sprouts. Now if you wanna use the canned bean sprouts, that's up to you. But if you stir fry, they're gonna get, you know, overcooked and mushy. So these are the fresh ones. Now with the rice and these bean sprouts, we're gonna mix this up and stir fry this for another two to three minutes until it's softened and heated. And then we'll be right back. Okay, so now this is all stir frying, nice. The bean sprouts are starting to uh, wilt. So when they get to that point, anywhere from three to five minutes, now I also have to add a couple more tablespoons of oil just to keep them sticking. And when you can notice that, you need to add more oil to start sticking. Now we can put in our egg mixture and our onions. Along with our diced up shrimp. So now we're just gonna heat that up to cook. And we need approximately two tablespoons of soy sauce. Now you know me and salt, how I don't care for it. This here is the light soy sauce. You can use regular if you want to, if you like the salt. But if you want, you know, reduce your salt intake, get the lighter. Now, we'll just cook this together for about three minutes and this should be done. All right, now this is our shrimp fried rice. Isn't it beautiful? And then I just garnish with a little freshly chopped cilantro on top.
You can see the chunks of shrimp in there without being too overpowering. But like I said, you can use whatever meat you want to, chicken, what, or beef, pork, whatever. And I have approximately, ooh, about three quarter to a cup of meat in there. And then you got the crisp vegetables. Of, you can see the bean sprouts, they're not too wilted. They're still a little crisp there by looking. So I hope you enjoy this shrimp fried rice from the Northwoods Cooking Show. Okay, now we can go on to our next recipe. Boy, that shrimp rice is great. Oh, God, was that good. Now we're gonna take and make some egg foo young. Now you can take and add any type of meat that you want to this. If you wanna do chicken or pork or beef, or even some um, cooked up sausages, whatever. And that's totally up to you and that's you know, personal preference. But what I'm gonna be making is just a traditional, I don't wanna say vegetarian because I'm gonna be using a beef sauce, but it's a vegetable uh, egg foo young. Now I could, I think I might, well, I think I will turn it into a, a meat uh, egg foo young because I have, do have some chow mein meat that I can use to cook that up. So let's get out the, the meat first. And we want to take and cook this off. And I have uh, approximately, is it two pounds? Uh, yeah, it's about two pounds of chow mein meat here. And I'm gonna cook this off. Now let's do this in my Dutch oven. Do this in a frying pan, whatever, doesn't matter. And I'm just gonna turn that heat on to medium high. And I am gonna put in a little bit of oil to keep it from sticking because the chow mein meat is basically beef and pork mixed together. And there's not much fat in there, so it, it will have a tendency to stick to the bottom of your pan is what I'm saying. You want to add just a little bit of oil, about a tablespoon or two. Now you can put in as much or as little as you want. I'm only going to put in half of this. I'm just going to do one pound of meat because it's like uh, overpowering. If you have too much meat, you know you're gonna. You don't, we don't want to have a meat ball egg for you. You know we want some meat in there, but you know not over and uh, over excessive amount. And what egg foo young really is, basically, it's a Chinese omelet. You know, people think it's like, oh, it's a big dumpling or, you know, they can get real extravagant with it and add this and that. But you can put anything in there you want to, technically. You know, it's all up to you. But what it actually is, it's, it's just an omelet. <laughs> so, it's, I mean, it's very easy to make. But because of the spices and liquids and ingredients that you add to it, it makes it more oriental and Asian. So while that's cooking off, we can take and start with my vegetables. Now, I got the spiralizer out because I want to take and do a trendy thing, which is really new with vegetables and a lot of the restaurants is that they're spiralizing their vegetables and adding it to their dishes for their ingredients. And they're doing this with regular salads, with regular stir fries. It's more popular in stir fries. But even a house salad, they're even spiralizing their vegetables to make it look, you can even find them in uh, Target. Spiral, I saw a packet of spiralized uh, zucchini. And it's like about a one pound container, looks like, you know, like the hamburger comes in. They're charging five bucks for it. Can you stand it? Oh my God. I'm like, that is ridiculous. Five dollars just to, you know, curly kill your, your vegetables. That's just a little too much. Because the vegetables themselves, you know, are just pennies to make. Just to get that all stirred. So anyway, I just put on the, the fine shredder attachment, spiralizer, and we'll just turn this on. And start it up. See? <laughs> Isn't this fun? I just love this little attachment. Now it spiralizes, but the thing is, is that you want to follow, it follows the shape of your vegetable. 
So if you have a zucchini that's, you know, kind of wavy, or whatever, you're not going to get the exact long spiralizing, but you get some of it, you know. So this was, was a little bit bent, but you get the gist of it. I'm going to stir the meat here. Now this combination meat of pork and beef fries up rather quickly. So we don't need to overcook it, you know, and get it all dried out and lose all its juices. So as soon as it gets just done with the pinkness, we can stop. Because it's going to take, I'll just pull that off the heat. It's going to cook up even more when we do the final uh, recipe. So now we're getting nice, beautiful uh, spirals. That's why if you have the really thick, wide carrots, you know, and sometimes you get those big cloth ones. Those will work perfect on this machine. Because see, the skinnier the carrot, the less spiralizing you're getting because you have that sense of core. But we do get some, you know, you get the effect of it. We get some of it. If we had thicker, wider carrots, we get more spiralizing. So let me just finish these off. Because we want approximately a third cup of each. So I can just maybe do one or two more carrots and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I have my meat all brown. I'm just reheating this so we get a nice hot pan. And you can drain off the excess liquid if you want to, the grease. But I'm going to leave it in because I do want it to add as a adherent to it sticking to the bottom of the pan. And it's going to give it a lot of flavor too. So this is all nice and brown heat it up. See? <laughs> just browned up, it's just browned off meat. And now to this we're going to be adding the omelet mix or uh, the vegetables first. I have approximately uh, one third cup of bean sprouts, the spiralized carrots and zucchini, about a third cup of each and a half cup of sliced mushrooms. Now this we're gonna take and stir fry for approximately two to three minutes just until they're all heated through and the bean sprouts start to wilt but don't wilt. You know what I'm saying? We don't wanna overcook them so that they're you know mushy mushy. We still wanna have crunchy bean sprouts but we just don't wanna have raw, so we want them slightly to slightly bend. And the uh, carrot is going to heat up so that it starts to become soft. And the zucchini and mushrooms as well, just to heat up just so they start to turn soft. We don't want them to be mush and we don't want them to be hard as rock either. So anywhere from like two to three minutes. That's why in Asian cooking, it's you gotta have patience because it's real putsy because of all the prep work you have to do before you start cooking. But once you get all the prep work done and you throw it together, it only takes a couple of minutes and boom, 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 you got a whole meal. You know, it just takes a while to cut up your vegetables. That's the only, you know, impatient thing about it. But the cooking itself to make the meal, it's like boom, you throw it together, it's done. Okay, now these are just somewhat limp. They're just turning limp. We got that part done. We don't want to overcook them now. And then we can put in the eggs. Now with the eggs here, I have four eggs along with three tablespoons of water and a tablespoon of soy sauce. Now, I want to spread these vegetables up because there's quite a bit of them. And I want to make this into the omelet. This is going to go over the whole thing. And you just want to take and smooth out the top of it. And we'll just let this cook. We're not gonna, you know, stir up the bat. We don't want scrambled egg, we want egg full young. So what we want is an omelet. And if you do this in small batches, then you can have like individual egg full youngs. So you can have, you know, more like a dumpling size. But since this is one large batch, we're gonna let this try to cook all the way through thoroughly. 
back I'm even going to take and put the cover on just so we can start to cook the top down so that it's not so liquidy because you know when you make the omelets how the liquid eggs are on top and you want to cut into it to bring the liquids back underneath there to cook more well you attempt to do that don't put the cover on and that's heat is going to help to solidify the liquids on top because we want to try and keep this as a solid omelet rather than scrambled eggs so let me just let this sit for about two or three minutes and we'll be right back okay so this turned out nice and it's like about halfway through it then we're gonna we flipped it over to cook the other half the upper side the top side <coughs> excuse me now we're gonna make the gravy sauce and this is a mixture of two tablespoons of cornstarch a half cup of beef broth and a tablespoon of soy sauce and that all gets put right into the bowl or to the pan and we also have uh, two to the four scallions cut up and you can do those into like a fine uh, slice now this is gonna only take a matter of seconds to heat up and thicken it and once that is boom 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 it's all done that's it and this can go right over your egg foo young now again I only got a quarter portion on my plate here so I don't want to pour all of this on here but just to get the, the gist of it and give it the flavor some of the scallions and that broth mixture and there you go and this is our egg foo young with chow mein meat zucchini and carrot mushrooms scallions and onions in the mix we hope you enjoy this from the Northwoods Cooking Show. Mmm, can't wait to dive in. Okay, now we're going to go on to our final recipe. And this is going to be simple chow mein. And what I have here is our chow mein meat. It's got about a pound. And what this is, is a combination of pork and beef that's ground together. And we're going to take and just brown this off. Now with this chow mein meat, you do want to add a little fat to it. So we're going to put in about a tablespoon of oil. Because it's so lean, there's like, you know, no grease for it to fry up in. And then while that's browning, we're going to be adding vegetables, of course. And I already took in uh, pre-cut everything. So what I have here is approximately about half cup each of, I have shredded carrots, celery, and onion, or as we call it in restaurant, uh, um, mirepoix. <laughs> <laughs> and that's carrot, onion, and celery. Down south they call it a uh, holy trinity, and that's carrot, onion, celery, and green pepper instead of carrot. So we want to brown this off and I do need to add us a little bit more oil that absorbs it off. Like I said this uh, chow mein meat is extremely lean. There's no fat in it. What it is is the end over pieces of the steaks and chops from the uh, meat market they just take and grind up to make the, the chow mein meat. It's like it's like it's so lean it's like there's no fat on it so you want to make sure you add a little bit more oil this doesn't dry out and burn on you okay and that's already brown just about yeah there we go so now we're going to take and add our vegetables the carrot celery and onion and we're going to let this cook down until they're nice and tender but you know three to five minutes and while they're cooking then we'll be right back okay now our vegetables are nice and tender you can see <laughs> <laughs> we 
We're going to put in a little as much as you want <laughs> of mushrooms. I just want to get rid of this leftover stuff. See, now a lot of these uh, vegetables that I have, my carrot and set were left over from a previous recipe. So I just take and dice and cut them up to fit this recipe. Now with my mushrooms I had left over from my last recipe, I have approximately about a half a cup to three quarter cup of here. And if you have more, fine. If you have less, that's fine too. It doesn't really, really, really matter. Okay, so now with this, that's all um, cooked off, nice and tender. We're gonna put in a can of sliced water chestnuts. Now, you, I drain these off. You don't have to, but if you don't drain them off, then you just have to add more thicker sauce to it. And then I have a can of bamboo shoots and a can of chopped sweet vegetables. Now, depending upon how much you want to make, large can, small can. Basically, it's because we want to get all these flavors together. And of course, we got to add a little bit of five spice powder. Now, be careful on this. You only want to put in like about a quarter teaspoon at the most, maybe a half at the very most, depending on how much you're making. Because if five spice powder is extremely strong and pungent, if you put in too much, it's going to be just overpowering and it's going to make your food taste terrible. So you want just a titch in there, just enough to flavor it, but not to overpower the other foods. And then I'm also going to put in approximately ooh, about a quarter cup of oyster sauce. I love that in, in oriental cooking. I just love it. And if you do just plain vegetables, drain off the juices and add your oyster sauce. You got instant stir fry. And you can put in any meat in there too if you want. So it's very simple, very easy. Now for the sauce itself, I have a half cup of water with two teaspoons of uh, cornstarch. Make sure it's cold water so that the cornstarch dissolves, along with a tablespoon of soy sauce. And this is going to be our thickness for this chow mein sauce. And then here's our chow mein, which is made with beef and pork and lots of crisp, fresh vegetables. Mmm, doesn't it look good? Yum! So I hope you enjoyed these dishes that we made today for a little Asian cooking with our egg fu yang and shrimp fried rice and our lovely chow mein. Mmm, can't wait to dig in. So from the Northwest Cooking Show, I love to say, eat healthy. Be safe and spread the sunshine. Bye-bye.